Good afternoon and welcome to E3 Civic High's information session along with a virtual tour. Our hope is that you get some information about us to get to know us a little bit better and to see everything that we have to offer. To start out, our mission and vision is to engage, educate, and empower a learning community to be passionate lifelong learners and civic leaders who are prepared for college, workforce, and life. So if you were wondering where we got our three E's from, they are engage, educate, and empower. This is our graduate profile. In other words, this is what we expect our graduates to be able to do after attending E3 for four years. That's to be a literacy communicator, to be career competitive and have college competitiveness embedded in there, to be civically engaged, to be creative and innovative, and to be globally engaged. We provide opportunities at E3 to make sure that they can achieve each of these. In normal times, our learning model is a blended learning model. So you'll see here in the pictures that our scholars are used to working together, sometimes working independently, working hands-on, and also working with technology. We are a one-to-one -one technology school, and that means that every single one of our scholars receives a MacBook Air for the duration of the year that they are able to take home daily. This allows them to access the curriculum, to collaborate with other group members and other students, um, and just allows them to have that access to learn about technology in a safe and effective way. Now it's because of our one-to-one -one technology and because of our blended learning model that we were actually able to skip zero days of instruction when coronavirus became big enough to shut down our education system in California. On Friday, March 13th, that was the last day our scholars were on campus. And by Monday, March 16th, our scholars were fully online with classes being held and no days were skipped. Here are two of our signature programs. The first is our civic service. We are very committed to civic service at E3 Civic High, and these are some pictures of our scholars giving back to the community. Every year, twice a year, we have something called Civic Service Week, where our scholars will come to campus, but there might not be uh, the same kind of classes, and they will go out in groups to volunteer at different organizations. We've had scholars volunteer at beach cleanups, at park cleanups, uh, folding clothes for families in need, volunteering at food banks, a bunch of different things um, because we do just think that it is important to give back to the com community and to teach our scholars that. On the right we have design thinking. Now design thinking for those of you who may not know is basically a problem-solving method and it was born out of Stanford University a bunch of years back. Um, it has gotten so big that companies like Apple and Google and different universities will actually use design thinking to tackle their real-world problems. And we think it's really important to teach our scholars this, to give them the edge and to make sure that they're well-versed in this before heading off to college or the future world. So every grade level will have a design thinking class and they'll work on grade level projects. The only exception is once you're a senior. When you enter your senior year, you are able to choose a topic of passion or interest that you can work on and try and try and solve with a small group. This is really great just because it gives those seniors that opportunity to really work on that passion project and to follow the correct steps to see if we can get the best and most sustainable solution for that issue. Now the reason I mention this is because these scholars in this picture on the bottom right are four of our scholars that were underclassmen, they were not seniors, and they are in that picture talking and teaching, talking to and teaching a group of students about design thinking. But they are in China. They are literally presenting to a group of students in China about design thinking. So this is what we mean when we say we give those opportunities to be globally engaged and be literacy communicators and career competitive. So we are hoping that you know design thinking continues to be um, a great addition to E3. Some of our unique highlights. Um, we do require our scholars to take the SAT before graduating. Uh, we know some things have changed in the college arena in the last few months, but we still do think it's important to make sure that all of our students have all of their opportunities um, there available for them and that none of them have been closed off. So that's a pretty unique uh, requirement that most other high schools do not have. We also have POLs or presentations of learning and this is a way for seniors to kind of say farewell in a sense. They do a presentation um, covering the last four years of their time at E3 Civic High. So they will go over their academic growth, they'll go over their personal growth, the challenges, how they overcame them, and of course what their future plans are. 
And it's a really great way just to kind of see the growth in those seniors. We do also require our scholars to apply to a four-year university and complete the FAFSA or the DREAM Act. Again, this is about keeping those opportunities open and never closing off opportunities before making a decision. We also have a 100% graduation rate, which we are very proud of and we are hoping to keep. We have a computer science course requirement. We have robotics courses and clubs. First Robotics, a competitive uh, robotics club. We have ACE, which stands for Architecture, Construction, and Engineering. And of course, Exhibition, our year-end event, which happened for us in May. Um, and it's when all of those design thinking projects that the scholars have been working on all year come to life. So our school normally turns into a little bit of a showcase with hallways filled with projects, common areas, and classrooms just overflowing with all of the work from the year. And it's, it's just a really great way to see the work that we do and to kind of see the community that we have built. Uh, if you are, have the opportunity, hopefully at next year's ex exhibition, we would love to see you all there. Mental health and wellness. So we are very lucky enough to have um, Mr. Smith, who is our wellness counselor. And so he's able to provide us with some individual on-site um, with the times, you know, in, in home, but right now pretty much telehealth, right? Being able to talk on the phone and Zoom or Google Hangout meet. And he is there to still provide support for our scholars, especially during this time. Uh, we also do hold uh, groups, counseling groups, for both boys and girls that cover life skills, self-esteem, anger management. They've been extremely helpful for some of our kids, and uh, we very much think that the mental health and wellness of our scholars is super important. Mr. Smith has been there to assist parents as well. So this is just a really great uh, feature for us to have and resource for us to have to make sure that all of our kids are mentally healthy. All right, so earlier I mentioned that we prepared our scholars for college, workforce, and life. So now I'm gonna to talk to you about the ways that we do that. So I mentioned that we do have everybody take the SAT in order to graduate. And because of that, we make all 9th, 10th, and 11th graders also take the PSAT, which is the practice SAT of that. This is extremely helpful to build up that testing stamina. Uh, the SAT can be about four hours long or so. And if you haven't ever sat to take a test for four hours, it can be really challenging if you haven't practiced and built that up. So starting in ninth grade, along with other SAT prep, we are able to provide that support. We also offer a college prep course. So on Friday mornings for about an hour and a half, the seniors are all with the two counselors. I'm one of them, and we have another counselor that also comes in, and we are able to deliver all of the instruction in terms of the college readiness process. So making sure they know how to apply to college, how to apply for financial aid, for scholarships, how to write their essays, how to request their transcripts, anything from start to finish, we are there to guide them through. We also have parent meetings, so about once a month, especially for seniors, we have a parent meeting to walk you through as well what the process is like. We host two Saturday college application workshops a year, one in October and one in April, and the nice thing about us being a bit of a smaller school and also having two college and career counselors is that we do have the time and the resources to be able to meet with families. So if you have a specific need or doubt or question or you need help in a specific area, we are there and this is what we love to do. So please never hesitate to let us know that. Um, and we also have yearly college tours. So in November, every scholar goes to at least two colleges, uh, usually one two-year, one four-year, but sometimes two four-years depending. We'll try to get our juniors off campus sometimes, and they've gone in the past to UC Irvine or Long Beach State and UCLA one year. So we do try to make sure that they are experiencing college campuses and know what they have to offer. Additionally, we also offer college classes on site. We offer UCSD, and now we are also offering city college courses, and those are available free to our students, and that allows them to access the college level material to make their transition into college much easier. A few years ago, E3 Civic High became a partner school with uh, UC San Diego, which was an amazing, amazing thing to happen. We are now part of this program, which means that for some, our students that get accepted to UCSD and graduate from E3 Civic High, there are some certain income and asset requirements, but those eligible students can receive a scholarship of $10,000 a year for up to four years. 
So this is an incredible opportunity for all of our scholars because um, many of our scholars This is an incredible opportunity for our scholars to be able to go to college, go to a prestigious four-year university, um, and not go into debt for that. So um, there are one, we are only one of five schools that are approved for this scholarship program in San Diego, and it is a great, great program, so we're very lucky to have it. This is a picture of our class of 2018. About 15, 14 or 15 of them got accepted, and about 10 of them are there right now on a full ride. So it really did open up our, oper our ability to um, access UC San Diego financially, and it gave all of our scholars that opportunity. Okay, so now for workforce. So 100% of our scholars complete internships because as a senior, you are required to complete an internship um, that is off-site usually two to three days a week. Any place that you can think of, I'm sure we can find an internship. We have an internship and workforce coordinator. Her name is Miss Woods, and she is responsible for setting up all these internships and having all of these opportunities for our scholars. She's an incredible resource. We've had scholars intern at politician's office. We've had scholars intern at hotels, at restaurants, at cat cafes. Um, literally anywhere you could think of, at art studios, at lawyers' offices, at hospitals. So anything you can think of, we can definitely place you somewhere. And that's just a great way to get your foot in the door in a career or to really see, I wonder if I really actually like this. It sounds cool, but now let me try it out in an internship uh, arena and see if I feel the same. So that's a really great way for our scholars to kind of get ready for that workforce piece. We also do job shadows, and that's where our scholars will go to different organizations and kind of shadow somebody's job at different companies. So that picture up there at the top is our scholars visiting the Bumblebee building that is actually pretty close to our school. And they kind of learned about this man's job who needed to pair the different tuna fishes or the different products that they had at Bumblebee and pair it with their marketing label. So you see some of them are empty and don't have anything on them. Some of them do, some of them are open. And they had no idea that this was a job that existed. So that's our intent with that is to show them all the different jobs that exist and to see what sparks an interest in them. And then lastly, we do career speaker series. And that's where we have all of these connections that we make from the job shadows and the internships from our community come on campus and they talk about their career. So they talk about how they got there, what education they needed to get there, what their daily tasks are like, what skills you might need to succeed in that career and the scholars are able to ask questions. The greatest part about this is that the scholars can choose where they wanna go. So we are making sure that they are really listening to these careers and have this in their mind um, for something that they're interested in. And this starts in ninth grade. The Job Shadows and the Career Speaker Series starts in ninth grade. Um, so they, we make sure we are kind of activating their brains to think about the future always. And lastly, we have life, and those are travel experiences. Um, so. In the past, we have always offered a trip to China in the summer. Of course, this year things are a little different, but this is a great opportunity for our scholars. We've also arranged trips to Spain and Mexico. And if you're wondering why those countries, well, the two languages that we offer at E3 are Mandarin and Spanish. So this gives our scholars a way to practice what they've learned, to be able to immerse themselves in the culture as well, and to just continue to try to be globally engaged. I had the opportunity last year to run an East Coast college tour where we went to 11 colleges in six days. Uh, I had a group of 10 scholars with me. It was an absolutely amazing experience. It was a little tiring, but it was great because the scholars were able to see the different colleges and start to realize what interested them, if they wanted a big or small school, if they wanted to be in the city or out of the city. And uh, it was just a great way for them to Kind of get their interest in there. We were hoping to do a Washington DC college tour this year but hopefully we can continue and pick that up next year. We do have professional attire. Um, these pictures are kind of all of the different ways you can wear it because there are a few different ways but the general rule is khaki bottoms or pants um, or skirts for girls or they can have kind of that plaid skirt as well. Um, there's always that E3 white polo. Um, you can see that throughout no matter what you're wearing. That E3 white polo is always there. And then we have a multitude of tops. So we have cardigans, we have uh, vests, we have windbreakers, we have sweatshirts. Um, so there are kind of some options. 
Every Tuesday is Tie Tuesday, so regardless of gender, every scholar comes on campus with a tie that day. And we also have on Thursdays college and career sh uh, college and club shirt day, excuse me. And each scholar can wear a shirt from a specific college or a club that they're involved in on campus. The rest of the uniform still applies, but you are able to wear a college shirt or sweatshirt on those days. Here you'll see our daily schedule, and this is our normal daily schedule when we are on site and in class from 8.30 to 3.45 Monday through Thursday, and from 8.30 to 2.30 on Fridays. Now in our virtual world, we have a slightly different schedule where we go from 8.30 to 3.25, and on Fridays from 9 until 2 o'clock. Any changes that would be made, of course, in the future or for next year, we'll be sure to communicate that with our community. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Now we'll hear a few words from our CEO, Dr. Ward, along with some of our team members to let you know a little bit more about what we can offer at U3. Hello, welcome to E3 Civic High. My name is Dr. Ward and I am the CEO principal here at E3. E3 is in the downtown library, recognized as one of the most innovative schools in the nation. At E3, we do lots of fun and different types of assignments. Design thinking is our signature program, and you'll hear more about DT. We have design thinking across the grade levels, 9 through 12, and we are leaders in that field as well. At E3, we believe in learning by doing, and I have some of our team here with us today, and they'll share a little bit about what they do in each of their departments and also our four pathways. Dr. Zhu, take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Zhu. I'm the Dean of Instruction Assessment and Innovation. Also, I'm in charge of the math department. In the math department, we have a variety of options of math courses, from Math 1 Readiness to AP Calculus BC. We use a variety of programs, too, especially to this distance learning model from youth scout to ingenuity. Also, we are helping our scholars to get ready for the state level testing, including CASP, as well as the SAT and ACT. Welcome to E3. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Cerruti. Hi, I'm Steven Cerruti, and I am the lead for computer science and design thinking in grades nine through 11. I um, would like to say that no matter whether you're first time using a computer or whether you're an expert programmer, you're gonna find a computer science course at E3 that will give you the skills that they're looking for you to have in college and for careers. Our design thinking program is a, a real experience here at E3. They're real world problems where you get to solve them and you can even compete in competitions outside the school for recognition. Many of our teams have gone on to win cash prizes and, and are continuing their projects outside of school. So I think you'll find that our, our computer science programs and our design thinking programs really support the rest of what you'll be learning about at E3. Mm -hmm. And prepare them for the world. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Woods. Can't hear you. Hello, my name is Melissa Woods, and I am the Workforce Development Coordinator in the Senior DT Lead, Design Thinking Lead. In your senior year, you'll have the opportunity to take Workforce Development and Design Thinking, also known as the Internship Course and the Senior DT Course. Your internship will last from October to May, and your DT course will be all year long. At the end, you'll be able to compete in Project Invent and also um, present to local businesses here in San Diego. Welcome. Thank you so much. Dr. J, science. Hi, Hi I'm Dr. Jonathan Chifaluru, but everybody calls me Dr. J. And I'm in charge of, um, I manage the 11th grade design thinking, uh, LFs and, and, and team. And so we're really focused on global health. And so that actually is a concept that infuses our under, underclassmen um, science offerings. So for freshmen in biology and for sophomores primarily, in chemistry, uh, the scholars get to explore a number of uh, concepts related to, to human health and wellness, um, most enjoyably food. So we spend a lot of time uh, thinking about how food is grown and prepared and cultivated and eaten 
and metabolized uh, within both biology and chemistry over the first couple of years of a scholar's experience at E3. As a scholar matriculates through the grade levels, the scholar will be able to um, enjoy a lot of advanced offerings, including AP chemistry, AP biology, anatomy and physiology, and marine biology, just to name a few. Um, and in addition to those offerings, we also have three distinct pathways, the biotechnology pathway, the aviation pathway, and the robotics pathway, um, through which the scholars can really enjoy just a wide variety of options in STEM. Thank you so much. All right, Ms. Harkrider, Humanities. Hi, I'm Michelle Harkrider, Dean of Inst uh, instruction and I am uh, here to talk to you about English and what we do with our uh, scholars to prepare them for life as well as for college. So um, we are all about authentic learning and, and differentiation in this department. So English looks a little different maybe than your traditional school, which means uh, you might be learning something um, totally creative one day and, and something that's applicable to your design thinking project. And then you might be skill building the next day. Um, so in our ninth grade level, uh, we have a couple of different offerings. We have an English support class. We also have pre-AP world history along with uh, um, English. And then at our 10th grade level, we offer pre-AP or actually AP uh, world history as well as pre-AP English and AP English. And our 11th grade, uh, we have um, 11th grade English as well as AP U.S. history. And then at our 12th grade level, uh, the capstone year, we have uh, expository reading and writing course as well as AP literature. So in all of these courses, um, you're exploring the human condition. You're looking inward and outward to how you can better the world, um, what you can do to come up with real solutions that support those around you. So we're really glad to have you here at E3 and we welcome you. Thank you. And expository reading and writing, that is a college course, right? For the Absolutely. UC, so this is a CSU course developed by in partnership between CSU and teachers to develop uh, learners for the college courses. So uh, by completing this course, you're actually taking a pre-college level course that will actually exempt you from some uh, entrance exams for college. Yay. And Mr. Cherudi, tell us about those pathways that you have. Yes, we do have those two pathways. Um, our exciting pathway in cybersecurity is intended to get you to a point where you could go out and find a job, an internship in the cybersecurity field. This field has a huge demand in San Diego. So lots of jobs are available and they're good paying jobs. This is an advantage for you. If you're thinking about going to college, you might be able to get a cybersecurity job in college and leave college with absolutely no what debt whatsoever. So really good opportunity. Our other pathway focuses on um, software engineering or programming. Um, this is a, a field that we believe will be strong for years to come and is going to provide plenty of opportunity for growth. Um, and for some people, they just really enjoy this. So it's great that we have a set of courses that you can come through E3 and advance your programming skill as you go through E3. Thank you so much. Thank you, team. And to our guest today, uh, welcome to E3. And as we say here at E3 in departing, Take care of you, take care of each other, and take care of E3. Take good care. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to E3 Civic High's virtual tour. My name is Angie Colon, and I'll be guiding you through our school today. E3 Civic High is on the 6th and 7th floor of the San Diego Central Library, located in downtown San Diego. You can find our entrance on the corner of 11th Avenue and J Street. Our school is divided into two floors and the layout of each is almost identical. Let's begin with the sixth floor. Once you get off the elevator, you arrive at our front desk area. This is where we greet scholars in the mornings and families or any visitors on campus throughout the school day. Next up is the park. This area has so many functions for us. Scholars gather here in the mornings before school and during lunch and passing periods. Our staff also holds our weekly professional development in this area. Lastly, we hold many assemblies or grade level presentations and even performances for our scholars. In fact, this is where you'd be right now if you were able to have an in-person tour. At the far end of the park on the left, you'll find our digital media arts lab. Here's some scholar work from these classes. We offer two types of art classes. The first is digital media arts and the second is visual arts. 
For the digital media arts classes, we have these walls lined with the IMAX to access the Adobe Suite and other platforms needed, but still have tables so that our scholars in the visual arts classes can continue to draw and paint. This lab allows our arts program to have the space it needs to flourish with the help of our scholars and Mr. Sharada. As we leave the Digital Media Arts Lab, you can see our presentation stairs coming up to the left. Scholars eat lunch and hang around the stairs, and we also host fundraisers or set up informational tables here. To the right, you'll see the stairs to go up to the seventh floor, but we'll get to that in just a bit. And this hallway on our right normally has tons of scholar work up, and it's just another area for our scholars to hang out at lunch and continue collaborating. Looks like we're at our next stop. The Commons. E3 Civic High has four common areas, two on each floor and one per grade level. Each one has four to five classrooms and all have almost identical layouts. Even though each common area takes the name of a grade level, for example, this is the 11th grade commons, scholars take classes in all four commons. Take a look at some of the studios and their different setups. The common area was designed to encourage collaboration between scholars. The sliding doors in some studios allow for our learning facilitators, which are typically called teachers in other schools, to provide small group instruction and personalized learning both inside and outside the classroom. With tutors and additional learning associates, we are able to have scholars work independently or with help in the common area in addition to the studio. This setup also allows for learning facilitators to collaborate with each other and combine classes for certain activities or projects. As a one-to-one -one tech school, we also provide a charging station in each common area where scholars can fully charge their MacBook Air laptops throughout the day. Now that you've seen most of the 6th floor, let's explore the 7th. Take a quick look at this map and notice how it looks almost identical to the 6th floor map. As we go up the stairs, you'll notice larger blocks of steps to the right. This is just another area for our scholars to socialize before or after school. As you can imagine, this stairway gets pretty busy during passing periods with our scholars finding their way to their next classes. Next up, the plaza which is directly above the park. The plaza is normally filled with round tables and chairs. With the E3 cafe nearby, this is the main area where scholars will eat breakfast, lunch, and supper. Our counselors host grade level college readiness meetings for both scholars and parents in this area as well. And one of my personal favorites, our genius bar is also in the plaza. With each member of the E3 community having a laptop, we have our fair share of technology issues that come up. This Genius Bar allows our scholars and staff to have access to tech support each day and get their issues troubleshooted by our amazing tech team, Mr. Russell and Ms. Aria. Down this hallway, we'll find our scholar restrooms located on both the 6th and 7th floors in the exact same spot. And to our left, we have our college acceptance wall. Every time a scholar receives an acceptance, the counselors post a letter to celebrate as a community their amazing accomplishments. Next is our pathways. In this area, you can find our college and career counselors, you can find our registrar, and a resource library of different colleges in the area. We also have a wellness room where you can meet with Mr. Smith, and we make sure that all our scholars are supported. Our last stop on our virtual tour is our Rhythm Studio. Many people wonder how we have PE in a school like ours. Here's just one component. Our Rhythm Studio comes prepared with all the equipment we need to carry out a full PE class on site. 
However, most of the time, our PE coach, Mr. Cuffey, prefers to take them outside to get some fresh air and more exercise. My hope is that you got a little taste of what's inside of E3 and some of what we have to offer for our scholars and families. We sincerely hope you are safe with your loved ones and are hoping to meet you all in person one day soon. Thank you for joining us today from E3 Civic High, where scholars are being prepared for college, workforce, and life.